Welcome to In The Shop. Today, we got some serious action Jackson. Mike broke another shock. This one has something, uh, there was something about a bottle of Pendleton, a shark tank, and a KTM dirt bike and some cheesy leather jacket. I didn't really get the whole story. Maybe we'll get it from Mike when he comes over in a minute, but uh, I am tasked with uh, fixing it. I'm picking up the pieces, man. Picking up the pieces and putting them back together. So I'm gonna go ahead, grind it open a little bit, like a little V, and then just start laying, uh, laying some bead in there. We're gonna make this shit happen. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, what I did was I went ahead and ground a V into it. So now I can go ahead and get complete penetration to all the way in there, and that's that's the key. I used this thing here. I'm no pro at this. I mean, I'm kind of a butcher. Have to get used to it, people. I'm a butcher. I'm a butcher. Um, so yeah, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and fire the TIG up. I'll probably put it on 120, 140 volts. And uh, of course set it to aluminum. This is the cheater TIG because it's got steel, aluminum, and the, there's, the setting is a, right here, numbers on off there. It's a cheater because it doesn't have a lot of adjustments and... Yeah, you're stuck with one a sine wave and not you can't do square wave or change the pulse. It's supposedly smart and figures all that out. Anyways, I'm going to get on it. Okay, just got done doing the thing. Mike's here to inspect the oh, yeah. situation. Looking good. Looks good. We'll get a shot. I'm going to do a kiss up grind clean up on it. Then we'll um, go install it. Because the, the, the motor's in. So now, what was this I heard about a shark tank? A bottle of Pendleton, some cheesy leather jacket, and a KTM 300? What the hell? See, he doesn't remember. How you broke this? Oh, I broke it? Yeah, somebody said you jumped the shark tank with your leather jacket. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? No. He can't even remember. <laughs> that must have been some good, that must have been the Pendleton ride. It must have been. Must right have been on. some really good pedals and Yep, yep. So, bam, diddle. We got that done, and we went ahead and made some changes on the on the 300, which we're going to go. He said it had the power to clear the shark tank, but if the shark tank was any bigger, he might not have made it. So we <laughs> upgraded the ignition, and we're going to show you the uh, ignition upgrade right now. And you guys thought I was bullshitting about the uh, shark tank. <laughs> Yeah, baby. Yeah. So now we're putting the shock in. Yeah. We're trying to put the shock in. <sighs> Ran into a little issue, minor issue. Um, the SEM ignition coils, the stator and the flywheel, and the, the CDI, um, from the beginning, I think KTM knew that they, that they were problematic. And when we did the 620 project, we actually had the thing running with an SEM ignition and went to, I think I left it sit for like two or three weeks and then went to start it and it wouldn't start. And did a bunch of diagnostic diagnostics and found that the, uh, the stator was bad. The ignition portion of it was bad. The coil, the lighting coil actually still works. And that's kind of what we found on this one. Um, the spec for the red and black wires are supposed to be yeah. and so those red and black wires what go they go to they go directly to um the cdi okay the red and black. so the ignition power was incorrect yes so what was going on and what it's supposed to be read is 1.7 k 
kilo. kilo ohms, it's reading 1.1 mega ohms. Basically, it's not, uh, uh, she's bad, so she's not working. So, what I found, I went and did a bunch of research, and I found that um, KTM knew about this stuff back in the early to mid 90s. And they did some changes and they offered two different ignitions. The 300s, they still put this SEM in, but like the 250s and then the later 300s, they went to a Japanese uh, Kokusan ignition. And Kokusan. <laughs> Kokusan. So, and what I did find on, on the internet, thank God for the internet, um, a bunch of information about retrofitting Kokusan ignition into an SEM uh, case. case. And so what I did was I found a complete uh, 97 uh, Kokusan 2K-2 ignition. I purchased that and it is basically bolt-in. Perfect. The difference, the problem is going to be the, uh, the CDI, obviously this was made to go on that bike and it bolts directly on because there's a bracket that's for it and blah, blah, blah. The other stuff, not so much. It was not made for that bike directly, but it fits the case because later the cases were, the, they, the KTM made bolt holes for both of them in the case. So you can use either or. Let's and go look at it. Let's go. So what we did was took the old one out, bolted a new one in. This plate right here is part of the stator, and it bolts directly in. I had to drill no holes, nothing. Um, and then the flywheel bolts right on. Uses the same, uses the same uh, taper and everything. Um, the only difference that I ran into was the. Um, on this one, I had to use the old nut and I made a washer, a big washer, to fit down in there to hold this thing on better. Um, the, I think from the 97, it uses, it, they changed the crank a little bit and they made the, the, um, the end of that, this shaft bigger. Yeah. So it had larger, larger diameter uh, threads on it. Oh. But that's, I don't think it's gonna be an issue at all. And what'd you do? I see there's adjustment marks in there. Well, um, if you check on more on the internet, you can find that the later cases that actually have, internet. they actually have marks on those on right there on that, in that particular spot. What I did was I measured, did some measurements, um, got some pictures that are one-to-one -one and figured it out that where those marks needed to be and I marked them on there and then drew lines on. Um, I don't think it's like uber critical. Um, it's, it's very, very- Forgiving with the timing? Close, close to the ballpark. There is one thing that's missing from this, uh, the flywheel, and there's a, there's a weight. Counterweight? No, it's just a flywheel weight. Oh, okay. It's not a counterweight. It's just, it makes this whole mat, the whole assembly heavier. But on a motocross bike, would they take that off? More than likely, yes. Okay. Um, this particular ignition <clears throat> setup, actually, the the guy that I bought it from actually said that it was from a 250 EXC, 1997 250 EXC. Perfect. Um, I kn know they make that 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 weight. That's it's actually part of this assembly. If you buy this uh, flywheel. You can buy it with that on there, but it's like a couple of hundred bucks. I'm not going to buy a new one. But I, what I did find is somebody that's selling just that weight, and I'm going to buy that weight. And then it's there's four Perfect. holes. Perfect. There's four holes in here. Okay. They're just M6 holes that just bolt that thing on. The cover fits without an issue. So now the only issue is mounting this. And this. 
that's the the coil and the the uh, CDI. CDI. So I wonder if you can't do a CDI. You might be able to put it right there. I was actually thinking even the coil. Maybe right on here too, right there. Yeah, um, that just might make a work. bracket off of this right here. I might be able to just drill a couple holes and in this. Yeah. Just bolt it right there. We will find the best place to mount it, the best way to mount it. It'll be ninja style. Be ninja style. They're gonna have to uh, get that bigger shark tank. This time, Mike says he's gonna jump two sharks. <laughs> yeah, baby.